Robots are the future of mankind. They'll revolutionise the workforce and make life a breeze for the modern man. Their capabilities and intelligent designs are sure to keep humanity safe for centuries to come. But when do robots get too self-aware? The core question is do they have souls? Well that's the main concept behind the 2016 Xbox One exclusive Recall. Recall was developed by Concept and Armature Studios along with some assistance from Asobo Studio. They've all worked on some pretty big projects both before and since Recall. Some of them include Mighty No. 9, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate and Plague Tale Innocence. Recall was initially revealed at E3 2015 with a CGI trailer and a release date scheduled for the following year. The game was published by Microsoft Studios and released in September 2016 for Xbox One and Microsoft Windows. The game mainly received mixed and average reviews that cited technical issues, long loading times and stagnant gameplay that gets boring after a while. A definitive edition was released in 2017 including technical fixes and additional content. I remember seeing the initial trailers for Recar and I always thought it looked pretty interesting, so I decided to play it for myself to see if it was as bad as the reviews said it was. The game opens up with our main character Jewel and her carbot companion Mac gonna put my thumb through your eye, you little bitch! trying to find a new power source for their base known as a crawler. The game takes you through a short dungeon where you learn the basics of gameplay. You auto lock onto enemies, shoot them until they're dead and take their cars. I'm sure the gameplay will get a bit deeper the further we get into the game. <laughs> After a short boss fight, we find a prismatic car and use it to repower the crawler. We learn that Jewel has a classic case of being frozen and sent to another planet to terraform it because Earth was ruined by a disease syndrome, and she needs to go fix a nearby communications pylon that's been offline for the past 96 years. You're introduced to customising your car bots and upgrading them in the crawler. You can swap out parts to make your own little Frankenstein. Jewel and Mac travel across the desert to the pylon and go inside to fix it. You go through the dungeon fighting car bots and solving puzzles until you encounter the boss of the area a spiky goat powered by another prismatic car. After you've rebooted the pylon, Jewel notices a nearby distress signal and decides to investigate, but to get there you need to go through a locked gate that requires more prismatic cars than you currently have. I decided to check the minimap and it turned out there was one pretty close to me, and I found it just sat in a chest buried in the sand. I thought these things were supposed to be special. After spending some time fighting enemies, I noticed that the combat music of this area reminds me of the Duke Nukem memes. No, it's not erectile dysfunction, I'm just tired. I spent some time gathering more prismatic cars and eventually got to the gate just to find more sand. Anyway, Jewel gets to the source of the distress signal and it's another human. His name is Kai and he has a car bot called Seth. <laughs> it turns out that Kai needs parts to repair his prosthetic leg, so Jewel goes out to find parts from the surrounding car bots. As you progress through the game, your rifle's upgraded with different colours. If you match the colour of your bullets to the colour of the car bots, you do more damage. After getting the parts for Kai, he suggests that you take the prismatic car to the car foundry to analyse it further. He lends you his car bot Seth <laughs> No, you're not getting the chips! The chips are off the table, okay? To make getting there easier. Seth lets you crawl up surfaces and jump off them, which leads to some quick reflex platforming. As you travel through the world, you're able to find audio logs. Some of them describe the events that led to the destruction of Earth, and others don't describe anything. <laughs> Jewel's able to make her way through the car foundry and analyse the prismatic car. It plays a dad's voice, which leads her to believe it's transmitting messages from ships containing Earth's evacuated population. After exiting the car foundry, Jewel heads for the tram that will take her to Eden Tower and is confronted by another boss. And these enemy designs are just boring. After being consistently stunlocked and killed for 15 minutes, we're able to defeat the boss and get on the tram to Eden Tower. Kai joins everyone just in time to be ambushed by Victor, the leader of the evil car bots. So Kai decides to stay behind to let Jewel escape. He radios Jewel and tells us about another route through an exclusion zone. So we decide to head through the shifting sands to get there. And this is where it hit me. The world of this game is just dull. All of my time with the game was spent either in a desert or in a dungeon and I was just bored. The game tries to encourage you to explore the world and hunt for collectibles, but when the entire game looks like this, I don't want to explore the world because it just looks the same all the time. Within the shifting sands we need to find a way through the exclusion zone, so while exploring, Jewel finds an abandoned crawler. On the walls we see murals of Victor corrupting the car bots and making them attack the crawlers and kill their inhabitants. After seeing this, Jewel finds Duncan, a gorilla car bot who tried to stop Victor. He agrees to join the team, and he uses his power to smash. 
As you leave the crawler, the game forces you to choose only two carbots to take with you, which seems odd, because surely they could have put them in some kind of weapon wheel setup like Ratchet & Clank or GTA. Joe makes her way towards the Warren in the desert, struggles to keep up. So we finally get to the Warren, and we need Seth to be able to get to the front door, after I decided to leave Seth behind when the game asked me to choose two carbots. So I spent 20 minutes trekking all the way back through the desert to choose Seth and bring him back. I really hope this effort wasn't wasted. <laughs> So we finally make it across the gap and register the fast travel point and... For fuck's sake. Well, at least I can start the next dungeon. <sighs> Fine. So after an hour of searching for cars, being nearly insta-killed by enemies and slugging my way through terrible frame drops, we're finally able to enter the Warren. It turns out that we can't reach the exit, so Jewel decides to look for a way up within the facility. After making our way through some awful platforming challenges, we find the parts to make a flying carbot frame. So we put Seth's car into the frame and now we have a flying Rogan. <laughs> After we get our flying car bot, we're given a rare achievement, which I found quite odd as it's just a part of the story progression. After beating another prismatic car bot at the end of the dungeon, we exit the warren and finally get the tram to Eden Tower. It was at this point that my Xbox just straight up refused to read the disc for recar. It would read other discs just fine, but I think it just had enough. I was able to get it working after a few tries, but I still can't help but think my console was trying to save me from the rest of this game. Once we reach the bottom of Eden Tower, we're confronted by Victor. It turns out that he destroyed all the ships in orbit, and he throws us Kai's prosthetic leg. Your friend is dead. You are alone, and Far Eden belongs to me. Give me the prismatic pores. Oh Jesus Christ, will you fucking shut up? Nobody gives a shit! We stand against Victor and kill him in a pretty underwhelming boss fight. And, oh, another rare achievement. Weird. After killing Victor, Jewel has to ascend the tower to start the terraforming process. So we start to walk up and... No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! I stopped having fun while playing this game a long time ago. If you want to experience Recar, just sit and watch this on loop for 12 hours. It'll save you money, and you'll probably have a better time watching this than playing this absolute mess. I thought I found a really easy way to get more cars when I stumbled across a random side dungeon. I opened a hatch by finding the surrounding cell bots and got to the main door, which said I needed the spider frame, so I went back to the fast travel point to swap out cars again, which I should just be able to do from the start menu. I have no idea why the car bots were restricted like this. It literally provides no benefit and doesn't make the gameplay more balanced. All it does is artificially extend the time spent traveling between locations and sitting through awfully long load screens. When I came back with the spider frame, I noticed that even though the recommended level to complete this dungeon was slightly higher than my current level, the game let me enter the dungeon. So I thought it would just be a bit more challenging. And by that I mean I just have to hold down the shoot button for a little bit longer to kill the enemies inside. I spent half an hour getting through the dungeon just to get to the boss, and I discovered that it's an unkillable boss unless you're at the recommended level. It's not a harder boss fight because of the level difference, your weapon just doesn't do any damage at all. In most RPGs, if you're at a lower level than your enemy, you tend to do less damage to them, but you still do damage. But no, I got all the way to the end of this dungeon, and the game pretty much softlocked me in an unwinnable boss battle. So I had to reload my save, lose the past half an hour of progress, and lose two prismatic cars I'd already gotten from the dungeon earlier. After another two hours of searching, I finally have enough cars to enter Eden Tower. The tower's been turned into a dungeon consisting of platforming challenges and battle arenas spread across five different floors. And this was probably my least favourite part of the game. The entire place is just boring. There's just random floating platforms and it makes it look like a test demo for the concept of a game currently in development. The battle arenas are far too cramped, so it's difficult to see attacks coming from the side. This means you end up getting stunlocked by swarming enemies and bounce between attacks that you can't see coming at you. The frame rate gets pretty choppy when there are too many things happening on screen. And in some arenas the dungeon takes on an ugly green hue which can make it even harder to see things. 
After making it through a few floors, I decided to go back to Jules Crawler to power up my car bots, because I've been forgetting to do that for the entire playthrough. We're able to make it to the top of Eden Tower, and just when Jules tries to fix the Prime car, Victor re-emerges and absorbs the prismatic cars to become Victor Reborn. He's finally regained his former power and you're the last thing standing in his way. After defeating Victor, Jules' dad appears to tell her that he's proud of her. It turns out that he's just an AI memory stored within the cars of Mac and other car bots, so once again, Jules is alone with her robots. Don't, Dad! Don't leave me all alone! You've never been alone, Jules. And you never will be. I guess the real cars were the friends we made along the way. Jules' dad disappears. I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> and the terraforming process begins. After finishing the story, I got another rare achievement, so I decided to look into the overall story achievements. According to the Xbox stats, only 2.82% of players finished the story, and it turns out that only 14.5% of players made it to Duncan. I think this is the perfect representation of how poorly designed this game is. Barely anyone wanted to stick with it long enough to finish the story, and I really can't blame them. That might say something about me more than anything else considering I sat through it and suffered out of pure stubbornness, but that's not important right now. After the credits roll, Jules Crawler gets a message from Kai. It turns out that he survived his encounter with Victor and found something incredible. The transmission cuts off and the screen fades to black. This is obviously teasing a sequel to the game, but if I'm honest, I don't think I want a sequel. While watching the credits, I noticed that there were barely any voice actors listed. The world and the game are just empty, which hurts the overall experience. I mean, we barely learn anything about Jewel as a character. She has no one to bounce off of for the entire game. We get a couple conversations with Kai, and that's about it. There are literally no other human characters in the game, and the three carbots we get just speak through beeps and noises. Alongside the empty world, we have boring combat, poor optimization for the Xbox One, you know, the console it was marketed for, forgettable characters, repetitive gameplay, and a focus on grinding for collectibles for no reason, which really ruined the overall experience for me in the end. It hurts to say it, but I don't think I can give Recar anything higher than a 3 out of 10. 